Hi everybody, my name is Elisa Bernstein. And I'm Stephen Leckie. And this is Vox Talks. Today we are going to look at Canadian politicians. We're going to analyze their speaking skills. The idea that no matter where and to whom you were born, you start free and should have a fair shot at success. <laughs> Upward mobility should be a realistic prospect for everyone. If you remain hardworking and forward-thinking, you should be able to build a better life for yourself and pass on even more opportunities to your kids. Justin Trudeau has learned to speak for his political career. But what will we do to help him on the short term? What would we do to help him today? He falls into some of the patterns of the other speakers that we, we don't like, which is the sameness, the same tone, the same pace. He's a scanner as well, uh, which we really suggest that people stop doing because it, it contributes to that sameness. One thing that I would have him to do today is the very thing you just mentioned. Stop immediately shifting weight. And let's just throw the scan into the pot at the same time because it obviously goes with it. Stop immediately doing that. Locate what you want to say. Locate a part of the room. Deliver it to that part of the room. The rest of the room can still see you and the rest of the room are open to you for subsequent developmental phrases. Stick with one place in the room and that stability will give you tone unique to that thought, will give you energy unique to that thought, and will give you a certain presence and stability that allows them to analyze and think and reflect upon what you've just said. Let's take a look at Justin in a more informal situation in an interview. Government, or governments are no longer able to actually help people out. So they pull back, they get cynical, they allow themselves to vote for the least worst of the options, they allow themselves to vote against what they don't like rather than for anyone, and uh, you get a polarization that to my mind is, is unlike us. So we need to focus on real solutions for the middle class that past generations of, or you know, past iterations of government haven't been able to solve. Uh, and we also have to focus on restoring people's trust in Parliament, in government. Again, here we see a big difference in the more spontaneous speaking in an interview. I actually hear different tones. I, I, I hear his own personality coming through. He's more involved in what he's saying. So what I also like here is that there is a sense of getting set up physically. Remember we talked about the shift. Mm -hmm. There's a sense of getting set up physically for what he's going to say and committing himself completely to that and right. getting the job done. You can really see how the thought hits him. His body actually moves and adjusts and then the words come out and that really gives us a real human expression. And there's a spontaneity here too that's, that's refreshing in terms of tone, in terms of energy, in terms of shifts. We have a government that has waged war on, on, on science by muzzling scientists, by uh, uh, attacking uh, good data. Uh, I mean, the, uh, the, the sham that is the National Household Survey. Uh. The one thing he has to worry about in his interview style, however, which surprises me a bit, is this strange jumping off all the time to little tangential thoughts or to other details which leads to a very odd breathing pattern where he's gasping for breath and it gives a very immature quality to the speech I find. I have noticed that with other politicians is they have so much to say and they want to say it all in the same thought and they really need to make a choice about what they're saying. Which brings us back to leadership, right? What are we looking for in leaders? And you're not looking for that sort of immature, nervous, anxious to please, anxious to fill in, anxious to give more details. It's like listening to a child come home from school and, and talk about everything that happened at school today mm -hmm. uh, at the same time as, as, as trying, to, trying to deal with the thoughts themselves. I, I see panic in the candidates, in Mulcair, in Trudeau, 
Elizabeth May as well, to, to try to get a lot in there and to speak fast. And it has the opposite effect. It makes you look like you are scared and you don't know what you're saying. Yeah, great point, great point. The key to politically uh, connecting with your audience is that sense of confidence, real confidence, not imposed confidence, not faked confidence, but that you project through simply answering the question in a simple, direct way. And that's all they're going to get anyway. The listener is not going to be able to follow all of these jumping off points and all of these parenthetical statements and all of these lists that go on forever. So the key to me in these comparisons is for the speaker to actually tap into what they're doing spontaneously and carry the good things about spontaneous speech into their political public speaking. That will have an amazing impact on the way they connect with the listeners.